I am so excited to announce that iDriver Classic is now sponsored by Adrian Flux, one of the UK's leading classic car insurers. If you're looking for classic car insurance, I've popped a link to Adrian Flux in the description box below. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and we're back on this very unseasonably sunny October day and we're looking at the very first Morgan that we've ever had on iDriver Classic. It's the Morgan Plus 4. Now, this is a very special Morgan, so we're going to take it out today, give you a bit of a tour around the outside, and we've even got some driving footage through the English countryside. Because if we're taking out a perfect English car, we've got to give her the perfect setting. So buckle up, because we're about to go out in a Morgan Plus 4 from 1953. It's not every week that we get to test a car like the Morgan Plus 4 on iDriver Classic. And this car is a true icon. Albeit a lot more refined and technologically advanced in 2020, the Morgan Plus 4 is a car which came to the market seven decades ago and is still sold today. But first of all, let's go back to where this all started. The Morgan Plus 4 came to market in 1950 and was the natural progression for the Morgan 4.4, which had been produced by the Morgan Motor Company since 1936. And that had a really lengthy shelf life too, because production continued until 2019. To understand the Plus 4 naming convention, it's imperative to understand that the earlier 4.4 was named as such because it was the first Morgan car to have four wheels, with three wheelers leading the way previously, and the second four represented the four-cylinder engine. So you had the first four for the four wheels and the second four for the four-cylinder engine. In today's world, it can be really hard to understand the appeal of the earlier three-wheel cars. But as mentioned in previous iDriver Classic videos, British tax on cars meant that three-wheel ve vehicles fell into cycle car classification and therefore were miles cheaper than their four-wheeled counterparts. However, like most loopholes, this one was abolished too, and with that, car makers had to act fast and respond to public taste. Because if you think about it, if a three wheel is gonna cost as much as a four, and a four wheel is gonna offer you a bit more refinement, you're gonna go for the four wheeler. And with this, Morgan created the 4.4, which then of course led to the plus four coming to market in 1950. And it was first presented at the Earl's Court Motor Show just like most good cars. Now the plus four was named as such because the plus was said to signify the boost in power and the number of new improvements. So the 4.4 had been sold with the 1267cc engine and the new plus four was sold at launch with the 288cc 68 horsepower standard Vanguard engine. Other noted changes and upgrades included the longer bonnet, the taller radiator, and crucially on the comfort front, a wider seat, which meant that the driver was then offered more legroom. It's worth noting that on this generation of the Plus 4, the engine was changed throughout the years, and changes included going over to the TR2 1991 CC engine in 1953, which offered much better performance, and then on to the TR3 engine in 1956, and then on to the TR4A engine until 1969 when production was halted. In late 1953, the model sometimes known as the interim cow model arrived, which is actually the car we're seeing today on test. And it was swiftly replaced in 1954 with the more recognised face. So if you haven't seen this face on a Morgan Plus 4 before, that's just a little bit of an explanation. Now, many buyers of the 1953 cars actually went back to Morgan for a facelift. So very few examples of the interim cowl actually exist today. So I feel like we're extra lucky to not only have the plus four on the channel, but this particular model. The several models were available at the time um, of launch and you could have got a two seat, a four seat, if you had a bit more money to spend, there was also the two or four seat drop head coupe with a four seat coupe made from 1954 through to 1956. However, many people see the Plus 4 as so much more than a touring car 
capable of long distance and cross country potential, and instead see the racing potential potential and notable credentials. And can you believe the first wins for this car were celebrated as early as 1951 and 1952, with the plus four winning the team award in the RAC Rally. Now winning wasn't a fluke for this incredible car, and Chris Lawrence and Richard Shepherd Barron won the appropriate class at the 1962 24 Hours of Le Mans in their plus four prepared for the competition. Now you might be wondering why this happened, but competitions were unnatural for the plus four, because not only was the car immediately suited due to the high power to weight ratio, the tweaks made in 1954, including the radiator now hidden behind the cowl and grille to improve the aerodynamics, and the aforementioned addition of the TR2 engine, it all just added up to meaning that competing was not only possible, but victory was highly probable with the right team behind the wheel. Morgan then went on to create a two-seater competition model in 1966. These were limited to, I believe, 42 cars, and it was 10% more expensive than your standard plus four because they tweaked various bits, including the exhaust manifold, the aluminium body, which was then, of course, lighter and therefore more suited to task, and other changes such as the steering wheel, the 72-spoke wire wheels, the uprated adjustable rear shock absorbers and the 2.2 litre twin SU carb TR4 engine. Now unlike many iDriver Classic tests, this sadly isn't a classic which is affordable to many, but Morgan cars are so iconic and world renowned, I made an exception and thought we've got to bring this car to the channel. Now I realise this has been a very short history, we've probably breezed over a lot of bits and pieces but this is a very short video, so we can't include absolutely everything. Now I'm going to hand over to Guy, a man of very good taste, and someone you'll have spotted in some of our previous videos, including the Austin 7 and the Panard 20K special. So, over to you, Guy. Hi, my name's Guy Loveridge. This is a 1953 Morgan Plus 4 four-seater. It looks funny at the front end because it's what's known as an interim cowl car. This car is quite famous. It was campaigned in motorsport by a chap called Pat Kennett. It's known as the coffee can car uh, because of the headlights. It looks like someone stuck a couple of coffee tins into the front of the car. Morgan uh, tried to modernise their flat-fronted look in the early 50s. Peter Morgan drafted this look and uh, having ordered 20 cars to this spec they found that it didn't comply with american regulations so they changed the front end to what is recognizably the modern morgan look today modern in that it's 60 years old and all but three of the cars were changed to the modern front end this car is one of only two four seaters there's one in america and there's a two seater knocking about that have this interim car front end under the bonnet is a twin su carved tr engine so the uh, venerable standard vanguard based four pot this one's been slightly breathed on for competition. This is one its class in the Exeter trial and the Land's End trial, and has been sprinted and hill climbed all over the country for years, and also provides uh, family motoring for five of us when we go out on a summer, sunny summer afternoon. Now, looking inside this, we've got a really good setup because bear in mind that this car is from 1953, so we wouldn't expect masses, but we have plenty on offer. And in fact, it's the beautiful finishing touches on this that tell us this is a truly luxurious car. Number one, that's a solid wood dash, not like the 90s when we start going on to that fake stick on plastic wood. Now this is a map light, so again, just really nice. It's all these chrome detailing and all the Baker light buttons as well. It's just really nice. Now over here, we've got our Speedo. And just under here, where you might have on a more modern Speedo, we've got a little clock. We've got the push start up here, which of course, if we when we come to start the car, we'll push this in to start with the choke pulled out. We've got our panel lights over here. And we've got our wipers over here. Now, for those of you that are eagle-eyed, you'll spot that we haven't actually got any wipers on at the moment. But when you've got the wipers on, it will be up there. And of course, single speed. And if you're wondering what this is, this is our horn. And then down here, this nifty little contraption. So to start the car, we would, of course, turn the key. 
But as well as that, we've got our headlights on here. So we've got side and headlights there. And then we've got our additional dial to the right hand side of that. So our first quarter is of course amps, so that tells us if the battery's charging or not. We've got oil pressure, we've got fuel, and we've got a temperature gauge there as well. And coming over to my far right, I've got my indicators. So we saw this, uh, we saw this switch on another one of the cars that we took out recently. Somebody remind me which we which we saw it on. Now just under here are three additional pulls that have been retrofitted. So for competition purposes, we've got our fuel pump here. Now this one in the middle is not currently connected to anything, it was attached to some additional lights and then we've got our fan to the right hand side as well. Now that's a quick whiz through our dash, I wanted to show you the gearbox as well and I was quite surprised to find out that this car has synchro on all gears bar first so it should make for some quite comfortable driving. Now usually I make sure I get this right when I do the gearbox, but I wanted to show you, it's quite stiff. We've got synchro on everything apart from first, but let me show you, because it takes quite a bit of effort to get that into a gear. So foot all the way down on the clutch, and we go up into first, down into second, across, and go up into third, down into fourth, and then we come all the way across, and we go up into reverse there. Wow, managed to get it first time. Now let's get her started up and uh, I'm going to let you hear what she sounds like. So if you've never seen a push start before, I thought I'd show you how it works. So it's not like some of the older cars where you just pull the choke out and it starts. You need to turn the key, pull the choke out the required amount. Now for this, I'm giving it very little choke because of course the car has driven to location today. So we're not going to need to give it too much. Now once you've done those two, you then push the start. Now we've got side exit exhaust on this, so we're going to pop round to my side and uh, you can hear the exhaust note. over section didn't make the cut it sounded terrible so what I thought I'd do was create a pick and mix clips of me driving and just talk to you about what the driving experience was like and how it handled because this car really blew me away I was really intimidated at the start and I thought oh god I'm gonna hate it it's gonna be really difficult but as soon as I got behind the wheel of the car I understood the Morgan magic because realistically on today's roads with all the traffic it wasn't the nicest of experiences but I imagine that if I took this up to somewhere like Scotland or out into rural Wales we would have had a lot more fun we would have been able to really put our foot down and experience the full magic of this Morgan the handling was completely different to what I expected um, I thought it was going to be an absolute pig to be honest when I first got into it but it blew me away and as you can see on the handling on these roads yes it is incredibly bumpy but my god was I won over it handled like a dream despite my initial reservations about that long bonnet and how I thought it might mar the experience and by the end of the trip I felt like I just could drive anywhere in it and I guess that is exactly what everybody who owned a Morgan told me I would feel like and if you ever have the chance to drive one of these you definitely should it's been like nothing else I've ever tested before and I say that about quite a lot of stuff but this is one of the only cars where the experience has been very different but I would relive the whole experience again. Apologies for this voiceover section right at the end, not what I wanted to do but with all the salt on the roads and with the winter now in full force I wasn't able to re-record. So until next time, take care and drive safely.